Welcome to another Genesis Flight College training video. This video will show you how to use the Garmin G1000 FMS and the GFC 700 Autopilot to fly an LNAV approach when WAS is not available. Now it would be quite unusual for a WAS equipped aircraft to encounter a situation where WAS is not available, but the instrument flight test demands that the candidate fly an approach where vertical guidance is not provided. So that is why this procedure becomes important. For this reason, all instrument flight tests at Genesis will include an LNAV approach with the WAS turned off. This video will also explain the operation of VNAV, how to set it up and how to use it. But first, let's have a look at the approach plate for the LNAV to uh, Collingwood. So here we have the approach plate. It's the RNAV 3.1. We'll be using the LNAV minima. And we'll be coming in from roughly this position. And in the past, uh, we the way we conducted these approaches was we would arrive at uh, in this vicinity at about 3,000 feet and then look to intercept the CDA at 7 miles and carry on down to MDA. However, this transition here was fraught with difficulty and if uh, most of the students would always try seven miles and then select VS and so on. Uh, but it soon became appar apparent that you have to start a little bit early, say 7.2, selecting the VS, selecting the uh, rate of descent and so on, to actually be on the the path when you go by the seven mile point. So that was a little bit of uh, difficulty there. Uh, but it sure would be nice if we could have the autopilot take us to Mixer at 2100 feet on this three degree path here. And that's exactly what we plan to do with this uh, video. And I'd like to explain one more thing as well right here the visibility where does this number come from well it has everything to do with this number this number is the descent uh, decision altitude a uh, correction we're doing the uh, ALNAV so it has everything to do with this number and the visibility here is dependent on the height above ground And so you can see from this chart you can see from this chart that the visibility is dependent on the height above ground. And so one and a quarter mile is for uh, MDAs that are in the, the range 348 to 4, 3, 434 feet. So you are trying to uh, get to your MDA. You're trying to get to your MDA at the uh, at a visibility point that is close to what what is the required. So here you have the. CDA taking you down to 1120 feet, the MDA, at 1.1 miles. So that's pretty close. And it means that if you arrive at the CDA at that mileage point, then further descent to touchdown will be well within uh, the limits uh, and very close to the 3 degree glide path that you're already coming down at. So the idea is not to create a huge uh, change for the pilot uh, if he sees the runway at his decision point way back here at 1.1 miles he can just continue on pretty much the same descent as uh, as the previous portion and and touch down so you as a pilot on your flight test are trying to get there at that time so once you go by the the FAF 
and VNAV is going to take you to the FAF at 2100. So you're going to be right bang on here. Don't let it uh, get away on you. Don't let the CDA get away on you. Monitor these altitudes versus distances all the way down so that you can be very close to the uh, desired mileage point when you hit MDA. You can go low. It's no big deal. You will just get down a little sooner and it you can see that you don't have much room there to get down uh, dramatically sooner. So a little bit low is no big deal. You level off and then you hopefully pick up the runway at the mileage point. The problem is recognizing that you're high and recognizing that you're going to uh, be maybe in it this close, maybe only a half a mile when you get to MDA. And that might make it very difficult to put the aircraft on the runway. Well, you can probably put it on the runway, but in enough time to get it stopped. So uh, what you want to do is uh, try and make that point. And if you find yourself high, do increase your descent rate. But if you were to increase your descent rate, for instance, to a thousand feet a minute in order to dive down there, that would likely uh, merit a, a two or a failure uh, because you don't want to be ac uh, accelerating to a higher rate of descent as you approach MDA. So to, to avoid that, monitor all the way down to make sure you don't get high. Okay, so we're moving away from Kirov. Both pointers are pointing uh, to Kirib and we're in a uh, direct two as far as the navigation is concerned but we're heading 070 away from it and our current track is something close looks like about 077 and the on course to uh, to Kirib is looks like about 196 and that's a huge angle differential and when that happens you will get an alert, an advisory alert, that will say VNAV unavailable because of an excessive track angle error. So the the, air, the angle is way too big. And if you were turn, uh, if you were to return, uh, if you were to turn back towards Kerb in a right turn, as you go through the point where your your angle off is about 90 degrees to go to that uh, 196 uh, track, then this will go away because VNAV will be able to calculate uh, once you're inside a, the 90 degree point. You can also have this uh, VNAV unavailable for excessive cross-track error and that's just being off the uh, the track that you were supposed to be on and uh, uh, and for that reason, VNAV is not able to, to handle the uh, geometry problem. Okay, so we'll start a right turn. And put a little intercept on it, on the uh, desired track. That might not be enough. And we'll arm GPS nav in order to capture it. And when you do something like that, always have a look to see that whatever you selected uh, did take effect. So GPS capture is armed. Okay, so now we can have a look at the uh, MFD, and I'm going to freeze the situation.
so here's our flight plan. And right now, it shows two blue numbers. Now, VNAV must have a blue number in the flight plan in order to calculate. And when there is a blue number in the flight plan, VNAV is calculating right from the very beginning. From wherever you are, it's calculating. And so, uh, right now, it's calculating to take you to Onder at 3,000 feet. And to do that, it's going to start uh, a descent right at this point. Uh, if you're not going to use VNAV, then you just got to learn to ignore the audible uh, or the oral uh, alerts that you get and uh, the various uh, visual alerts. Uh, typically, VNAV is used when you've got time to set it up. It's a little complicated to set up. So typically, it's when you're en route and you're uh, are about to arrive at a destination. You get it all set up and there's lots of time. When you're in a situation uh, where you're having to make uh, smaller altitude changes, say something like uh, a thousand feet, then uh, you might as well just go with VS for your vertical uh, uh, mode because it's a lot simpler to set up, a lot faster, and you don't make as many mistakes with it. So here we've got uh, the time to do it. Uh, we want VNAV to take us down to the FAF at 2100 feet because that point is on or is precisely on the CDA. So if we can arrive there on a three degree vertical path, we're effectively on the CDA right from the very beginning, uh, even though that that would be starting out here somewhere. So that is particularly desirable, but we have a problem here. VNAV will first of all take us to Onder at 3000, and we don't want that. So we get the cursor active, and we scroll down, we'll just clear it. So we'll clear it, and then what happens is the blue number is replaced by a white number, and VNAV is no longer calculating to go to that uh, altitude at Onder. Now this is also useful, uh, not so much at uh, Collingwood where the MSA is 3,300 feet, but in mountainous areas it could easily be that these two waypoints are lower than the MSA or the track uh, uh, minimum altitude. And so you, you can immediately check that uh, you're not going to violate the MSA because what this means is that if you start down at the top of descent and are being delivered to Mixer at 2,100 feet, you will go by Kirib at 4,700 feet and Onder at 3,400 feet. So you can easily check to see that you're within the uh, restrictions of uh, MSA. Okay, so uh, that's what we want to do. We've set it up. And the one other problem we have to fix is the angle. So right now, uh, VNAV is planning on using a two and a half degree vertical path, and uh, we want three degrees. So to get around that, you go to the soft key VNAV profile, select it, and that brings in the uh, cursor. We don't want it there. We want it over to the right, and then we want to reduce that angle to minus three degrees. And now that puts the time to the top of descent at 4 minutes and 26 seconds. And you can see it's moved in here a little bit. So we're back moving again. And the transition to MFT and back to PFT, we lost the, uh, the GPS capture. So we'll just set that up again. And we're going to uh, set up VNAV now. So you don't just go ahead and poke VNAV. Always, 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 before you select a vertical mode, change the altitude to what you want to go to. So we know that VNAV works by setting in 100 feet lower than the VNAV altitude, which would make the desired 2,000. But we eventually want VNAV, no, correction, we want the autopilot to take us down to MDA, which is 1120. 
So why not put it in now instead of waiting and possibly forgetting uh, to do it later on? So we'll do that. Okay, 1120 is set. And now we can select VNAV. And when you do that, you check that the v vertical path capture is armed. And you pop over to the MFD. And you see that, yep, we're going to go initially to Mixer at 2100 on this 3 degree guide path. And the top of descent is just a little over three minutes away. Okay, so we're all set up now. Uh, we're just waiting for one minute before the top of descent. I'm going to just reduce the throttle here because we're getting close to starting the approach. So I'm bringing it back to a speed that's appropriate for the up until the point where you uh, intercept the uh, the CDA. Okay, GPS has just captured track. And that's something you should do when you're on the flight test with the examiner. Whenever the autopilot makes a move like that, uh, you just ver <laughs> verbalize the fact that uh, you are monitoring. So I just said GPS is capturing track. And that tells the examiner that you are closely monitoring the autopilot and not just letting it uh, operate on its own. vertical track. Okay, so there we are warned that uh, it's one minute to go to the top of descent. And these things become visible now. This is just vertical deviation that tells you how far you are away. This distance from there to the second dot is 1,000 feet. So we're about 500 feet below the uh, vertical path now. Here's the desired uh, rate of descent and here's the altitude we're going to. And then you go over and you look here and you're checking again. Yep, we're going to Mixer, 2100 feet. And there's the uh, current rate of descent. Uh, here's the desired, once we start going down, we're 12 seconds away from uh, starting the descent and the vertical path is coming down to meet us. So we see that the vertical path is captured and this means that we're going down to the VNAV altitude which is the magenta altitude. If it was ALTS we would be going down to the selected altitude, uh, the blue number. And as far as the speed goes, uh, it's uh, now you would want to be pretty close to your uh, approach speed and so I'm just going to try and get the there it is 90 <coughs> okay so we're in the turn to uh, capture track to under Now, we are on the three degree glide path. So we could be using the CDA numbers uh, chart, uh, the chart of di altitude versus distance if it extended out past Onder, but it doesn't. But once we hit Onder, we could be using these, uh, these distance numbers and as you 
hit the uh, various uh, numbers, you could check the altitude on the approach chart. I can't see both on this display, so what I'm going to do is it's 4.1 miles from the FAF to the missed approach point. And so at Onder, that should be, well, we'll know when we're at Onder. We want to see 3690. When you're on the CDA, you lose, or when you're on a three degree uh, path, vertical path, you lose about 300 feet for every nautical mile that you travel. So at two miles, we're going to lose about 600 feet. So we're looking for 3690 at under. Airspeed is dropped. Don't know why. Trainer doesn't normally do that. Okay, under 3700. So we're within 10 feet. And now we're getting distances up there on the, uh, just above the scoreboard, distances to mixer. So at 3.9, we want to see 33.30. And we've come around the corner, so we're checking. Yeah, we've got LNAV, LNAV approach, and we'd make a radio call with our uh, time to the threshold, to traffic. Three point nine thirty three fifty, so twenty feet high. I don't change rates of descent until I see an error of greater than fifty feet. At two point nine, correction. Uh, yeah, two point nine. Uh, we want to see three thousand, but we've got to uh, get rid of this uh, VNAV before we get to Mixer. Otherwise, VNAV will level us at uh, 2,100 feet. So right about now, we'd be configuring, set in the, uh, or put the flap down, mixture, prop, all that stuff, fuel pump, 2.9, 30, 20. So we're still only 20 feet high. And now we're going to select VS. And we're going from 450 feet per minute we're now got VS and it's showing it picked up 400. So we can expect to go a little high. Also, this tells you VPath is still armed. We don't er, want it. So hitting VNAV again gets rid of it. And now we don't want to go high. So I'm going to select nose down to get 500 feet a minute. And At Mixer, we want to see 2050. Four fifty was the rate of descent when we were on VNAV. We're a little f higher than that, so that uh, we might go low, but that's preferable to going high.
Okay, 2030. So we're looking pretty good. I think I'll just select uh, the rate of descent to 400 feet a minute now. At 3 miles, we want to see 1740. And we went by the FAF, so we checked the altitude. We were real close and uh, uh, make a radio call to traffic uh, with a number of miles away now, three and a half miles from the uh, threshold. And a final configuration check, flaps, gear, prop, mixture, fuel pump. So three miles, 1670, we're low. So one more little correction. Two miles, we want to see 1420. I don't want to leave that 200 foot per minute correction too long, so I'm going to go back to 400 feet a minute down. We want to see 1420. Two miles, 1420. And the next thing is uh, MDA at 1120. Five hundred. So sixty feet to go. And here we are at the one mile leveling, powers going up, looking for the runway. Minimums. Minimums. Okay, so that is a fairly accurate and easy transition from cruising flight, a constant descent from the time you start your initial descent, uh, no leveling off, uh, straight through the FAF and on down to MDA. It's uh, really easy to do. It requires some thought about setting it up, but once it's set up, uh, it's an excellent way to execute this type of approach.